Now, what I want to talk about today is some security issues with 11G and then moving on to release 12C. Now, in general, previous releases of the database have had real problems with security, particularly with PL SQL. And this does cause a bit of confusion out there. When you read third party assessments contrasting Oracle security with, say, SQL Server and so on, some people will say that Oracle security is rubbish, other people will say it's fantastic. Well, what causes that paradox? It's because you can secure your database, but you have to do it. Out of the box, the database is stuffed full of marvelous facilities for developers, marvelous facilities for users, but many of them are potentially highly dangerous. So make no mistake, an Oracle database can and should be totally secure, but if your DBAs and your programmers don't make it secure, it may be wide open to abuse, wide open to hackers. So this has always been a problem. Uh, with later releases, 11 and now 12, the situation is improving. There are more and more things that one can do declaratively, more and techniques for tightening up those wonderfully powerful facilities that can be open to abuse. So what I'm going to go through is spend some time with 11G. We have to. We have to understand what some of the problems are that are being addressed. And also, of course, 11G will be available and in use for several years is to come. So I'll spend some time in an 11G environment looking at some of the major issues in the PL SQL environment. Then we'll move on to 12C and see some of the new facilities, new facilities and see how they tighten up the security issues that we see with 11G. If possible, I don't know if this will come through or not, I'll maybe have a quick look at network access control lists, they're completely re-implemented in 12C, and maybe talk a bit about the advanced security option as well, so that has changed somewhat too. So that's the agenda I intend to follow. Beginning with 11G, we'll go through what are defines rights, what are invokers rights for code, the relationship between roles and PL SQL. These issues, defines rights, invokers rights, and roles, potentially very useful, but cause a lot of confusion. And I remember, I remember when stored PL SQL first came into, was first introduced in version seven, many, many years ago, I found this mind-bogglingly confusing. Invoker's rights came in a couple of releases later in 8i. That added to the confusion as Invoker's rights attempted to fix the problems caused by definer's rights. So roles have always been confusing in a PL SQL 11G environment. We then move on to the 12C techniques. It's a whole new privilege. Inherit privileges, privilege, or inherit any privileges. That tightens up many, some of the problems with both views and with PL SQL. And a very nice facility indeed, we can now grant roles to procedures. So the confusion of roles in PL SQL, well, that is not removed, but we can use roles in a much more intelligent fashion with PL SQL in 12C. Also, closely related to that, the concept of the bequeath view. Just as PL SQL stored procedures may execute with definer's rights or invoker's rights with the privileges of the person who owns the PL SQL or with the privileges of the person who invokes the PL SQL, it's the same with views. Historically, views always executed with the privileges of the owner. Now, to a certain extent, we can have what one might almost call an invoker's rights view. Then if we have time, couple of other things as well. <laughs>